All right, that's uh, our firm. Uh, we are from Barcelona and have an office in Madrid. Uh, and B720, if anybody's wondering, is just a code. The only it means is architecture itself. So it's, it's trying to codify what we do. The B is to be in the alphabetical order in a reasonable position. Um, but it also stands for buena, which is good in Spanish. So that's what we try to do. Not that we manage to get it, but we try to do good architecture. That's what we, the, all right. So that's the Expo Pavilion. That's, I don't know how many people are familiar with the Expo. The first thing about a project like this, to be honest, is, is it relevant? Is it, is it, is it adequate to, in the early 21st century to still do Expos? to invest such amount of money into something which is ephemeral, it's going to disappear, it's not meant to stay, and it's only trying to do something that somehow today is easy to do. I mean, information is all over, you don't need expos, as you used to, to need when, you, when, you, when they were invented. So, uh, and we did a, a, a pavilion, that's our plot, uh, in this big, very well organized, uh, very sort of rational uh, grid line. The, our project was a project that was done, was, was um, uh, uh, we were asked to do through a competition, was in, in a national competition, actually it was international, mainly Spanish participants, but it was, um, it was during the crisis, or, or, or by the when when the project was was decided to to happen, so basically Spain felt they could spend this kind of money in coming here in the middle of a crisis, which is not obvious now. I mean, at the time now it sounds a bit strange, but at the time I tell you, it was perfectly likely that Spain would not come, which was a big effort. But we, all it has to do with the fact that, as opposed to doing something formalistic or experimental or you know, this expos are, you know, they, it's, the, it's the kind of commission you think, this is the, this is the only time I'm, I'm going to be able to do something really special, something different. Let's try something really conceptual. Well, we decided not to do that. So basically we say, we're not going to do that. We're going to do the simplest of all uh, shapes, basically. The simplest to, to, to build, the simplest to, to, to uh, construct and uh, somehow the simplest to constrain the cost. Uh, so that was basically our concept was we're going to have two big bays, we have an exhibition which is going to be, we're going to race it, it's going to be just like a, a digester of visitors and we're going to be able just to open this up so that everybody could get through it freely underneath. That's, that's the building, I, would, I wouldn't bother about that. But basically it was these boxes floating over the, over the, the ground floor, there's two big bays. One of the bays represented tradition, the other bay represented innovation. It was just those frames that were repeated, that were built systematically. It was something that would be formally simple and, uh, um, and from a construction point of view, extremely simple. Uh, so you had this bay that you could cross. One was, everything was made out of timber. It was very much, most of the pavilions were because they were meant to be dismantled. So that's what we, uh, we did. And then we had on the upper level, we had this digester of, of like an intestine of, of visitors which get here in. Actually, they come along this, this ramp they get, oops, they get into this sequence of rooms, have the final, the final uh, show, and then get out of the get out of the pavilion, going round, which I, to me is one of the I think of the better, I think, ideas of the pavilions around this courtyard, which was a meant a very calm courtyard, uh, where. And it's the only addition we made to the official program we were given, which is going to, where it was going to be 
a chiringuito. I don't know whether you know what chiringuito is, but it's the only addition we made to a program because we had to have a restaurant. The whole expo was about food, as you may know. So it was about food, feeding the planet, and uh, we said, well, I think if it's going to be Spain represented, let's have a chiringuito. And then obviously all the people will go around it and we'll, and we'll, end, up, we'll end up at the shop of the pavilion, which is the, typically the program. This is the upper levels where we had the offices and some workshop areas and a, and a nice restaurant. And that's the content uh, that was not designed by us. Uh, we had a, the intervention of Miralda, which is a fantastic artist, which has been working on food for a long time. Those are the two bays, as you see, extremely simple. This is the tradition bay, this is the innovation, it's represented. And these are the boxes that contain all these series of rooms. As you see, the symbolism is simple. These boxes were very, very much made out of, uh, it's of a metallic finish, slick, almost um, uh, laboratory kind of uh, finish and the, in the innovation bay. And the tradition bay had this rough uh, uh, natural materials, which always referred to food. Basically, we're talking about as you see, even the colors, wine, oil, that's the cork. We use just, a, it's, it's a bit playful, if you will. For us, it was extremely simple in the way we conceptualize it. We were not trying to be clever. I mean, just sometimes you really, I mean, you have tried not to be too clever. That's, that's exactly the approach. On the other hand, we, I thought it's the right place to do something playful. So the idea of having a story to tell, the, 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 the food, how the food is done. This is, this for instance, are the mats that the traditional are used to press the olive oils. Uh, and so you press the, 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 the olives and you get the, 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 the oil out of it. So that was the image of the pavilion. And, uh, this is a hotel in Spain, in Madrid. This is the center, this is the Plaza de España. It's quite a central, this is the Royal Palace. Uh, it's, a, it's a recent hotel, I think. This project is, I would say, is one of those struggles to, for us has been a tremendous professional challenge in the sense that we've had, it's quite the opposite to the other one. The, one, the other one is an institutional, public funded, representing the, 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 the Spain in an international exhibition about, I would say, a relevant issue, which is food. This is it's just a hotel private, owned by a guy, a rich guy, who, by the way, if he's rich, he is right. Uh, and if you're not richer than him, you cannot be righter than him. Uh, so he knows better, by definition, on a very constrained public, uh, I mean, very constrained area of the center of a capital, which all these controls of the city and difficulties of the rules. And so we, this is where we had to work on. This had been a very important, this actually looks like Sao Paulo, but it's not, it's Madrid. It was quite extraordinary because during the crisis, even in this extremely central location, because of this series of sequences of, of events during the crisis, this main property actually was, had been used for tel by Telefonica, one of the most important com communication companies in the world, had been left um, um, uh, vacant for too long, occupied, squatters, so, so the city was happy to do that. That's, that's, that's where the, the place is. So just, just to go quickly about that, that's the location. It, it had, and we had a, what an interesting problem, which is, I mean, it's not a bad problem to have if you are the owner, is that you have a lot of a built area to put in there. As from an urban and architectural point of view, the problem was, was a bit too much. Um, and how you organize that, try to be responsible and sometimes respectful with the city, and of course, protecting the absolutely legitimate rights of our client to keep as much area as possible. But that is just a strong, competition idea, which was, as you see, quite, quite bold. We had the idea of strong so-called. And the extra area, we tried to be, do something on top of the corniche. So we had to protect, so the traditional, you know, 
Corniche of the square and have something on top of it. And quite a, something, something bold, attractive, and uh, because and that's what we did. Uh, that's what we were trying to do, having a so-called that will re be identifiable from afar as some, something light, something special, something, by the way, green, and having a very, I would say, a very solid, almost, almost, uh, I would say, simple and straightforward uh, main elevation that would agree with the corniche of the whole square. Well, that was the concept. We're trying to do that kind of arrangement, try to protect that and investigate what could happen there. Well, I won't bore you, but I will see in a minute, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. The city didn't want it. The client loved it, but he didn't, as we expected, but they, they, they wouldn't let us do it. And then they were extremely concerned about what was going to be at the back of it. The back of it was a small, actually to me it was even a more interesting urban problem because it was a very narrow street and we, and we had to do how to taper that, how to do such a big building in a narrow street. And we tried to organize how to relate to the fabric. We had a setback, which was strange, but it was there. We had to live with that. And that was another struggle. So I won't bore you with it, just quite quickly. That's the arrangement of the rooms. If anybody's curious, I'd be happy. But it's not, to me, it's not the most interesting thing. That's how everything ended up. This is the result of a strong agreement in between the city, which wanted something very, very, so very, I would say, compatible with the city fabric. You see what this colleague had to do in order to accommodate with that kind of, that kind of uh, fabric. And the fact that our client liked so much the classical language. So basically, he, he liked you know, all, you know, everything which was you know, um, bold, and columns and, and, and capitals and base and, and he also liked so much granite. Granite was his favorite material. So, so we decided why don't we just do something which is strongly referential to classicism, which is basically granite and just have some windows in it as that nobody would complain because it would be very much in the shape of the traditional fabric of the city. So that was the most simple strategy and the strongest in order to protect the project from all these pressures from the city and the, and the, and the client. Not just resisting them, trying to help them to achieve, it, I would say, an agreement that would, that would help everybody. And for us, as architects, not only help them do that, but also be responsible for what the city was going to have. So that's what we ended up with. As you see, this is just a very simple sequence of the, of, the, of, the, of the grooves of a classical, I would say, a Doric column. So basically, it's just that, I would say, absolutely classical ornamental mechanism. It's like if you just, you just you know, develop, you, you, you take a column and you just put it straight. And that simple ornamental mechanism used in a very, I would say, radical manner with glass and granite. Granite all the way. So we had three meters high granite pieces uh, in, a, in, a, in a ventilated facade, and then a sequence of curved glass that will go in front of the window. So that, that is very much the simplest, I mean, the, the simplicity of this strategy just to have this hotel facade. Hotels are always, from an architectural point of view, always a bit difficult to deal with in terms of trying to, they can be extremely repetitive, basically, because, because basically there are grids of three by three. So it's just a grid line, three by three, three by three, three by three, and it's always the same, it's always cells. So it's how you manage those cells in a place where it's suspecting some kind of... This is the background, I would say. We try to do something completely different. I think for us it was important that we had this kind of neighbors uh, we had to agree with, and this is what we proposed. We proposed to slope them down and try to use those references. That's, those are the neighborhood, it's like that. It's a completely different fabric. 
So this animal had, had to do two different faces. Right? The, you know, the, the one that is facing the big monumental square, and the one that is trying to be reasonably um, uh, nice to that street. So that's what we did. We're thinking of what was happening. We had that kind of curtains, that kind of ornament. ornament uh, and uh, unfortunately, we ended up with that. And we ended up with that because our client loved so much granite that he decided he was going to do granite. And believe it or not, he started to do it by himself, just ordering the builder to do it and behind our backs and the city's back. So which was completely, so I had to, we had to stop it and say, that cannot be done. Uh, we had to do what we applied for and then we have to an agreement to do this kind of prefab solid. So this is, and to me, and for you as students, I think, I, I think it's, it's worthwhile transmitting this kind of experiences because these projects are always, uh, designing is always choosing. You always have, designing is about you have options and you go one, and then you step and there's another, you have another choice. And you keep ch choosing in this kind of uh, um, choice tree, which gets you into, into, into the final project. And while choosing, you have to be conscious of, sometimes you are too conscious, actually, you, you're, Sometimes, sometimes even hurts, what you're leaving behind, what you're not doing. But you have an opinion of what, what is worth doing, regardless of what you're not doing. And in this case, to me, it's an interesting, every time I look at that, and sometimes it's of a bit hurtful to show it, even to show it to people like you, because this perhaps is not a project we would have done like that. It's, an, uh, it's, a, it's almost an emergency, it's an emergency, solution to, to a completely unexpected problem of a scale that was completely unexpected. So to me, every time I see it, I, sometimes I feel, if you want, the way of our own profession. So this is, regardless of all other projects, intentions, how sometimes you, you materialize an idea you've been thinking about for long, and it's sometimes even moving that you achieve to do something that you've been thinking that is there and is physically um, there. And this time, it's just trying to have a responsible solution. So apply your skills, your knowledge, to do something which is obviously a compromise. Everything, every project is a compromise. This is of a strong compromise. And uh, it's one of those things that I don't think I, 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 only, I honestly believe it's not what I think would be the best design for that because we have thought a lot about that and we had strong opinions about what would be best. And then again, for me, it's quite, I feel sometimes even proud of it because it's, I know nobody else knows what would have been or what would have happened, but I know what, what was the risk involved. That doesn't mean that we should, not, we should have stopped or used that as an excuse, because what we do stays, typically. So we, don't, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we shouldn't have excuses. I think we, have, we don't have to be lazy in that or, or giving easy. All right, I'm, I'm going to do rather quickly through these ones, because I think it's probably is nicer to explain one in one a bit, a bit more in depth, and I do that with the final, with the, with the mark. This is a completely different project in a remote location from, from, from our office in Barcelona uh, or Madrid. It was done in Sao Paulo, uh, where we had a small office for a while. Uh, and this is a very, it's a very straightforward program. It's like, it's, it's, it's almost a hotel. So it's a long-term hotel. It's like, or if you want a small apartment, luxury, small apartments tower. And uh, to me, it's a nice project in the sense that it's, it's a very, somehow, simple program with a bit tricky regulations that you have really, you take so long, like takes some time to learn, but once you understand them, you can play with them. But to me, what is different is, what was interesting is that these are just the, the product, it's those small apartments. As you see, it's just two, two, two base of, of, of apartments with, with a central core, and this, this relates to regulations, and, but, but it's, that's, that's the problem. It's got a funny, those are commercial images for, for that. But what is interesting to me is the background. Is 
is um, Sao Paulo is an extremely verticalized city. Everything is, is very vertical whenever you have opportunity. So you have every bit of the fabric of the, of the structure of the, of the land. When it's going to be developed, immediately there's, in most places, immediately it's, it's, it's opportunity to go very high. Uh, so it's a city that tends to develop into extremely a slender, or a sequence of a slender pieces that have that as the main characteristic, I would say. It's not, it's not that some, some are pretty, some are clever, some are ugly, some are simple, some are... But just keep, they keep adding that into this, that this sort of, like it's like, it's like, a, it's like a wood of, 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 of those towers. And they tend to be much more monotonous than you would expect. And actually, they tend to be gray or white and very simple. And it was interesting for us, we were, we were our client considered us, we had made a name there because we, we were working on a very important project in Porto Alegre. And I must say, we probably were considered a glamorous architects for, for the project. So we were, we were somehow expected to produce something different. And that was the reason they would call us. Funnily enough, they wanted something different, but we gave us a strong indication. They loved to, the, 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 the tower to be colored, or the color to be used, which is one of those things we'll talk about it later. It was one of those things that we somehow, we, I think we need, we need a, su a successful, very colored project a long time ago, and we have clients that come and ask us to do something with color which, to be honest, we feel completely uncomfortable with, because we don't, we, I belong to a generation of architects that was very much trained into the, into the mm, modernity principles, and even, and at the end of the, I would say even the failures of, of, of postmodernism, we feel uncomfortable with color in the sense that it's not an easy thing to do. Or is it, or it's easy to make a mistake with color. At least so I, I feel like that. So every time we have to deal with color, it's like 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 we have to we have to do this kind of attitude. It's, it's, it's not easy. It's not about it's somebody. If we it really require, let's try and do it. We can do it. And but they were they were asked to do it. They wanted a colorful. So I say, why not? Why not? And and. We started working on some of the research we had done in the past. And then, as you see, we had, again, this... In this case, was a bit... The grid was a bit, a bit more... A bit more... Um, uh, oblong. It was not that squarish, but it's the same. It's, it's a grid, a very clear grid of apartments. Uh, and that's the result. The result was that. What, basically, what we did is three, three pretty simple... Um, uh, operations. One was, first of all, was the, the, the color thing is not, was not a bad idea, I think, in general. In terms of, it was an easy way to stand out as long as we did it carefully, uh, with, with, uh, which actually took some time. The second thing is it gave us an opportunity to add a very much like material in, in Brazil, which is ceramic. They use ceramic to protect buildings. I think they benefit from a very stable temperature range. So because ceramic tiles are, are, are tricky in, in, in climates with, with a very differential temperature rank if, because di the movement, because the heat movement is, is problematic, but not in, in there. So it's not uncommon to find pro uh, buildings clad with uh, tile. And then they find that we could use it uh, as a, as a, as a long-lasting, low-maintenance, prestigious material, and have even a ventilated um, uh, facade, and with which was not so not too difficult to use uh, color. I would say it's of a not just a added color, but it's of a it's of a in mass color was good. So that was easy. To provide. Then we had a very complete so called, which had to do with the program, but was clear. And what we did basically is just stop uh, halves of a 
this, this sequence uh, divided in, 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 in two basic ways. One was vertically, so we had a division which was vertically articulated in three bodies, and then again vertically or horizontally in three big elements. So that was the simple game. And that allows us to show what was the common gray area in the ground, a common area in between, and some interesting, as you saw before, which is a standard program, a pool at the top, and, and, uh, and a place to have uh, uh, to sunbathe. Uh, so that was, that was the project. I was, uh, we loved the idea of, of using the shadow. We also took advantage of this programmatic thing to play a bit with the, with the, with the, with the top of the building, so that double duplex uh, apartments could play uh, the game of, of making sort of a slightly different composition at the top, and also tampering down a, up a bit, so this is moving a bit the, the, the tip of the, of the tower as, 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 you know, as, as the eve of a, of a cup, you know, so, to, so this, this protection of the sun was like that. On the other hand, we played a very subtle game there so that this series of bands were almost transparent from within the terraces. So that's it. You can see that that is the how the building stands. I like this contour. That was I think that was very much what the client wanted. I read this of uh, somehow standard just piling of stories and of the windows as the as a tremendous general background and our you know slender, uh, colorful. Uh, I would, I'm not sure, sure to say elegant, but at least elegant trying to be a, a tower in front of, in front of them. And that's the sequence. You see that the transparency. And the, I'd say it's a very simple, actually it's almost, almost standard solution, but we just played a bit with it, but it's, we, we wanted them in one piece. It had to be divided into, that's the, that's the ground floor. We, we played with the idea of having and a structure that showed that it opened itself to the to the, to the to the to the street, and of course playing with this with this of a, a tree-like thing. That was a bit of a game. I'm going to show very quickly just to give an, a, an impression of what our work has been pretty recently. And other thing I think is important, or this has been very important for us, is to be able to think of a scale of the project in all its ranges, so that um, it is as important to play, I think as architects, and this is all the story from, you know, from designing the, the, the spoon to the city kind of thing. Well, it's, and it's a bit, it's a bit of, a, of, 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 a, of a boudad, but it also is a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a true, it's a true ambition, I think, which I think is forms part of our concerns. And, and I would say even what, is expected from us, from society. I think this kind of, the kind of complexity we sort of train ourselves to deal with and help others uh, with. And I'm saying this because I'm going to talk about a, a project which is the smallest we've done recently, a pretty small uh, uh, project, and the biggest we've been involved uh, uh, recently, which is, by the way, one is built recently, recently finished. The other one will never be built because it's a competition we lost, although we will be involved in the project. So this is um, it's, it's, a, it's a foundation, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a social foundation that works with kids with, with, with difficulties, with, the, with the families, with the families that have economic problems in a very poor neighborhood near Barcelona. And we had Two, the basement of two buildings. This is a social housing, modern recent building. This is an old building, not very nice. And those ground floor uh, spaces were bought by, by the foundation. And this plot, this is, that, that was a plot. Was. So we, we had to build a building and add those two areas in the ground floor of, the, of both neighbors, neighbors next door. So those are the two. What is, I'm going to build something that is, 
what we did. So this is a system building, this is another building, there's the basement, two basements, plus our building, that's the foundation. Basically we've got this, and those are the four programs, right? This, these are, these are offices and these are basically three different kind of activities for the children that were different ages. And so that's, what, that's, that's how we organize the program. Uh, and then we, what we did was that kind of open, openness to the, to, to the, to the, at the back, there's this courtyard that links the three, the three bodies of them. Uh, oops, well, that's far too complicated. I don't think it's not, not for this presentation, but uh, that's how the whole thing works. And for us, it was interesting not just to, to build, to design the activities or how to take this world perform, which was pretty, pretty nice, I would say, because it's about how you make them work. I mean, it's about having these children coming out of school and helping them because some of them don't have a proper family. So, do you? You work, they work on, on, with them on their homework, even they show them how to cook, uh, because sometimes there's nobody, nobody home to cook, or, or, or situations like that. So we've got, it's a nice program, we've got this working area, this is, this is, this is a, a big kitchen, uh, and this is, this is the, the main offices, which links both, both bodies, you can get from here to there and there. And this is the, the this is the the, the 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 boys that are a bit older than that and have um, other activities. Uh, anyway, apart from that, and having this small series of piles of the of the of the activity of the service, the management of this is is the is to me the urban the urban way to deal with the with pro providing a unity somehow providing a unity that will explain that this is all something that is working at the same time. And at the same time, trying not to be, again, too, too much of a protagonist or trying to look down on this very humble, really humble and um, simple building that was obviously very, very cheap uh, building of flats at the time uh, in this working class uh, uh, environment. And this new social housing, which is a very reasonable, nice, a project with, with very low budget, but very nicely, I mean, simple, straightforward, modern uh, response by uh, some good colleagues from Barcelona. And that's what we did. We did this very rough, uh, uh, neutral facade, trying to explain the continuity. Actually, this is missing here, the last picture, because it was done later, after the photograph was done. And we tried to play the game of both the, I would say, the roughness of this exterior world, the sort of kindness of what is behind, the kind of, you know, it's like homey environment inside, and also even try to be sort of nice neighbors with the neighbors. We were having the same kind of things that are there, even, even the shape of our even windows were, so we're trying to be nice neighbors, we're trying to, to be, you know, here the designers of, uh, on the hand, trying to express what, what we are. This is, a much more open uh, um, sequence of, 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 of windows and, and terraces onto the common little back court, yeah. courtyard. This is how the foundation looks from within. There's a sequence of spaces. As you see, it's even for this, for the, for the, for the youngest, they can climb up there in a small, a small upper area. Uh, that is uh, looking up to the kitchen. That is from the offices. That is the terrace from the offices, and that's the and that's the court. That to me is a very simple, small project, and to me is one of the most satisfactory of, of, the, of the recent work. So it's, it's about trying to fill in into the city, trying to be sensitive on one sense, uh, and respond very, very carefully to a, to a very, I would say, a very specific program, which, by the way, it was really worthwhile helping because it's an extraordinary work they do. This is quite the opposite, in a sense. It's, it's, it's quite the, the, the opposite range of it. It's the new stadium of Barcelona, or actually extension of the Barcelona Football Club. It's a competition. Uh, it's an old... Actually, it's, it's going to do a new stadium 
on top of an old one, which seems like uh, is, is, by the way, no saving or no making it simpler. It's actually far more difficult than doing a, a new one. And um, we had to team up with the, 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 the club did something, I think, rather clever. They organized, they invited a group, a reduced group of teams to participate, but they had to pair, it had, it were couples. Every participant, every team was a couple. It was a local firm, or were one of the you know, reliable firms in Barcelona, and then an international expert on, 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 on the stadium. Some, some firms that would have built at least five or six stadiums this size, which are not that many. So it was a reduced, a reduced uh, number of players. We teamed up with, uh, with, um, with Acom, which is a huge firm, international, with thousands of people. They, I think at a certain point they understood it was going to be tough, but uh, we, as I told you, we lost this competition. We didn't win it. And I think the reason was that I was, I, I must take the blame for that, I must say. Yes, yes. I, I could not do something I wanted to do, which the winner did, but our partners didn't think it was the right thing to do, so it's difficult to tell, to have a very open, a very open stadium. So that's got to do with the facade, we'll see in a minute. But to me, what was important was the opportunity to have a, an interesting relationship between those two bodies and, and have a, have a uh, an open area there. In that regard, I challenged, so we challenged the, the basis of the competition. I thought probably that was a mistake because that was far too difficult to achieve. And, I, and we were probably not understanding the difficulties, so it, it, it was reasonable to, to, to do that. But for us, it was interesting the approach of having a completely different entrance to the stadium. So our concept was we're going to have a stadium that stays calm silent all week or every two weeks and the activity is in this park and the activity is in this pit that is going to link the two big facilities and that's going to be the everyday entrance the everyday activity of the club which is linked to the entrance into the museum a big store and uh, and then during the during the uh, when there is a match, then everything changes. The stadium becomes the big protagonist. The, st the entrance to the museum is is, is not relevant. So that's that's what we did. Well, we did a very simple sequence of 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 of, of uh, things that were made out of the concrete of the of the demolition of the piece that we demolished within there. So we tried to say, we imposed ourselves the possibility of using exactly the same concrete that was there into the concrete that was going to be part of this huge. So that was, that was it. I, I won't bore you with that. It was a, just, it's just as a contrast. I won't bore you with the, with the sequence of uh, program. But this to me is an interesting image of a uh, of, uh, different scale of that. So that, Anyway, yes, that, and that's the entrance. That's the how you get into the into the stadium. All right. All right. All right. Well, if anybody's interested, I'd be happy to explain more about how it works. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be too long. But anyway, it was I, I, for me it was interesting to show the contrast of of the of the projects you have to face so, and how happily I must say we do it. Uh, and I'm, I'm not saying just because I might be proud of it or anything. It's just, I think it's good to be capable of the two ends. Uh, it's not easy to be involved in a project that big. So, well, I feel, I mean, I'm lucky and honored to be able to, to, to participate in projects like that. But I, I don't think they are less important than the other one. And I honestly say, I'm not saying, I mean, obviously, it's, it's, it's much more difficult and, and singular in your career to be able to, but, but uh, it's, it's, no, it's, it's got more responsibility in terms of probably of economical responsibility, and, but it's, it's, uh, it's very much the same, the, the, the exercise, and very much for us satisfactory to do both. 
This is a very recent project. And to me, it's a very interesting project in regards that it's, it, it, it addresses one of the, I think, and it's been always a big issue. I think nowadays it's a very contemporary issue, is building on the system or pre-existing conditions that, and the decision of whether you're going to, what you maintain, what you keep, or what you, what you, what you change. So I would say the responsibility of the resources we use, or even the, 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 the pre-existence of, of, the, of the city, have become more and more sensitive, I think, for good reason. So before you do a project, the first, the first reason is, is it necessary? I, I, I've, I've, got, I've, I've got a lecture that I've been doing quite a lot in the last few years, which is about the, the necess which I call unnecessary architecture. And it was all about our work. We did, I, I picked at least 10 projects, which I honestly could say, I'm not sure they were strictly necessary to be done. And, and, and that is a fact that we keep, and is, I mean, we, we are commissioned by people who have a problem or, a, or, or to, to solve, and we, we, we may not be able to help them to, to, to satisfy a need. But sometimes you could help understand how much of that need is real. And even we should have an opinion socially what needs really to be done, and certainly what needs to be destroyed. I'm saying this, and we destroy quite a bit here, so, so I want you to know that uh, uh, we had to do the new, the new uh, school for I say elementary school, or no, the, the, the youngest of the youngest, so it's like from, from three to, to five years, uh, so preschool. Uh, for, the, for the French School of Barcelona. And they had been in this nice space, nice premises which were two little villas of the early 20th century. Very pretty villas in a nice garden. They was not the most adequate premises because they had difficulties, they, they, they were villas, they, were, they had been there for, I don't know, 50 years or so more. And, and they had been keeping, they kept adding extensions that were always provisional. It was there, yeah, it's going to be there. And it was really a bit of a, a, a bit of, a, it didn't work well. And had been provisional, provisional extensions that had been there for, for 50 years. And they had meant to be things like that, that they were adding. I, I don't know whether you can see them properly. Well, I'm not sure how they, but anyway, this is, this is one of the villas prior to demolition, because we decided when, that we had to demolish one of them if they wanted really to have this school in it. But one of the things that to me is interesting about, this is what they used to have there. So this is the provisional extensions they had to do, really in a very poor condition. They, had, they were you know, having problems with heating, with, with, with leakage, that was, that was the back of it. Uh, and to me, what is very interesting of this project is this a public project as a competition held by the French government? Funny enough, because this school depends on the French government. And this is almost the Cartesian, you know, is this very French approach, which I must say I, I liked a lot, because the competition was not so much about the design, but very much about what should we do here. So for us, we'll say that's the right thing to do, is because Typically, you go to a competition, you say, this is what should be done, this is going to look like, and this is what we should do. Don't do that, and then we're going to do this, and you have this fantastic solution, and you explain what you think should be done. And, but we all know that not always you're given really the chance to think it over properly, or are you given the proper information, or have you worked enough into what are your options? And they really not only gave us the opportunity, it actually demanded that in a very serious manner. Please, don't tell me what you would do and how it would look like. Tell me what can I do, what are my options, and why. And that's what we did. And I think we won the competition because perhaps we were the team that did that more seriously. Uh, so basically we say, well, there are many things you can do, and some of them have 
pros and, and cons, which are different. And we say, well, you can put something in between them. You can link them by very just basically what you used to do, but with all the program. The program was pretty much, I must say. It's not, it was not just having, I mean, there really was a problem. We, they really needed a lot of extra area. Uh, you can build a real so, a new SOCOL, try to keep those two things, because the memory of that, of the, those buildings, which had been many generations of students from in Barcelona have studied there, and I mean, they, they keep bringing their children there. And so this, this, this the memory was an important thing to, to save, apart from the, from the heritage and the city fabric and the, the reference. So that's what we did all the options that you could do. And we really evaluated very thoroughly. This had to be built without closing the school. So during a school they said it had to be done one summer, then some minor, as much as we could during the, the, the school year, and then next summer. And that was all. So you have to live with, with that. So we really studied thoroughly what would mean how to build it, how you could do it without disturbing the school year. We didn't think enough about the anxiety of the parents, about their children being next to a, to, to, a, to a building site, but we had to deal with that later. And we really studied up the options very, very seriously. And we came to the conclusion that was the best option. There were two options, actually. It was this one, which was having a new building there, and this one. It was a, for us, it was the really only serious options. And, and finally, we came to the conclusion together with our client that was really, if they really wanted that, they could do that. The good thing was that one of the villas was very well preserved, was actually was the original villa. The other one was a copy that the owner did for, for, for a daughter and was not, perhaps he had, didn't have in as much money as he would in the first one. And, uh, and it was not that well preserved. So we had this strong decision but we really felt completely reassured it was the right thing to do, uh, to demolish that and, and build this and take advantage of the difference of level with the street and the rest. These are basically the, these are the three levels of the school. This is the main entrance and, 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 and the kitchen and, and canteen. And those are the three, the three years, is the three, three levels uh, of, of children. They have, they have their garden, the terrace, and the, and the top terrace. All right. And, uh, and then again, and that's what they, they painted it all over before demolition. So they say, this is that thing. They hired a, an artist. All the children were there. They painted it all before. It was a nice homage to how this is. My, my wife and partner used, went there to study. My children went there to study. So I was part of the people crying there, saying, this is going to go. It's got to go. It's got to go for good. Uh, and there it went. All right. But you see what was there behind us. So we did that a provisional installation for the next year. So those are, we built very quickly, these prefab things that are, the good thing about that, there was one thing was good, one thing was bad, that's so good, is that they, these provisional prefab hats were so much better than the, the premises before that we're almost happy to have these provisional things again. The bad thing is that they had air conditioning and, everything, and the new project was meant to be low energy consumption, and was going to be no, 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 uh, no air conditioning. It's going to be so they were going to be transitioning from perhaps a bit more comfort in this. And this is the final result. Uh, once again, color came as a request. I, I, I remember a good friend of ours who, is, who lives somewhere in there, and it's a very good architect from Barcelona. I say, it said to me once, Fermin, I know you're doing the new school. I said, you will not do one of those full of color schools like children are always with colors. Eh? And I said, no, we're not. We're not. Um, but then there was a debate about that. I said, why? And, and they, they, we ended up having a mix of a, a more neutral building and, and the color. I had a very interesting research about the color of that. It was funny to learn that, of course, as you would imagine, the color of the building, they so much loved and liked, had never been the original colors. 
uh, of the villa. Uh, we did a bit of research of what, what it used to look like, even the, the, the neighborhood, and we tried to play almost a very honest restoration of what that villa used to look like. Um, and, and I would say a respectful relationship in terms of shape and, and volume and even the history of how those two volumes related. And still, uh, as, I mean, uh, as, uh, as you would expect, uh, a completely contemporary uh, approach and language to it. It was all, it was all prefab, or, or it was all dry building, it was all, so most of these things were built in a workshop and brought to site. And that's why it has this of metallic. That's, that's how, that's the courtyard, and this, these are the, the youngest, these are the medium, and these are, as you see, sun control is a very much an issue. They were not going to have we're not going to have any air conditioning. So this is got, is protected with this by the cantilever. The cantilever is, is like a secondary playground for, for this, those classes. They are protected by the sun here. And these are, they, they can shape the, and administer the third, the, 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 the sun as well. And they can climb on top of the, so they have their own courtyard up there. So they seem happy. They were, and that's the, that's the courtyard. All right, well, so this is some, this is a solar control. Some of them are going to, are going to be manipulated, so you can be operated electrically, so you can uh, adjust the amount of, amount of, the, the amount of uh, light in. Uh, yeah, and this is the top, uh, the rooftop of the, of the building, so. Uh, all right, well, that was good. Right, how are we doing with time? I don't, what time is it, is it too late? This is, yeah, perhaps I will explain a little bit more about this, but to me it's an interesting project. I, I, I've, I've gone through some, I would call it situations you can face in extremely different, but this for us was probably one of those projects that you have once in a lifetime. Yeah? And sometimes I say half, half uh, seriously, uh, that uh, only Barcelona is, only in Barcelona would you have the commission to design a flea market. Because flea markets are typically not designed. They're spontaneous, on the street markets uh, with, no, with no design. Uh, but uh, Barcelona really needed to do, uh, to design a flea market for good reasons. I guess you're fam familiarized with, the, with Serdar's extension of Barcelona, which is very well known, his grid line, and this square that in his big scheme was meant to be a very important central square, which never quite happened. This ended up being a very, very, it's been, it's been, historically it's been just traffic junction or, or transport junction. And, uh, so it was, it's never had a shape because it's never been formalized. Uh, and it's not having, never had a proper uh, design except for the 92, or for the Olympics. It was a nice, I think a nice try, which, uh, Curiously enough, didn't work out well, and it's been demolished now. But this is where we are, and this is where the Encants market. This is the Encants market, which is the flea market of Barcelona, which has been there on that spot provisionally. This is a market that is, I think it's almost, it's almost a thousand years old, a medieval market. It's been operating continuously, and they were moved from in, 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 the, in the early 20th century were moved to this place provisionally. And they've been, they had been there provisionally almost for a century, which gives you an idea of how much uh, they, I mean, they, they, they believe in, in, in the authorities. So they, they have a, uh, their, their skepticism is, is quite well funded, I would say. Well, they had to move, they were going to be moved from there 
to there because they didn't want to go away. They didn't want to go away once more. So if that square was going to be done, it was going to be a central nice square. They, were, they wanted to stay. They thought they had the right to stay and the city could not convince them to move elsewhere. But they convinced them to move here. As you see, this is, you know, this is completely unshaped yet. This big traffic system actually didn't work out. Actually, it's been demolished now. And a competition for the square was going to be held at the time we were doing this design. Now it's been, it's been I will show a little bit of that, but at the time we didn't know what was going to the final design of that. So we had this fantastic, in principle, important to be square of Barcelona with no project yet. And you can tell the importance of this particular spot because of the, of the intent of the city, because those two buildings here are two very important cultural uh, institutions uh, of Barcelona. This is the National Theatre of, of Catalonia. This is the, the Barcelona Auditorium. This is a Bofil, Ricardo Bofil's design. This is uh, Rafael Moneo's design. So two very important cultural institutions. And we were going to have this you know, cheap, informal, on the air market next door to them here. And they were going to be front line of this new, fantastic, important square. So we had, we had quite a bit of a problem. They were going to be there. This is what they used to be. And that is very much part of the problem. What they used to be was our most important challenge. Because once again, as in the project I've just shown before, we were going to be building on something that was there before, but was in this case was even more it was even trickier because it was, was not material, was unmaterial preexistence, which we should not destroy. Or well, this was what we felt as the most the utmost responsibility. We should not destroy this market by designing it. That was our main concern. Because that is the market, as you see. That's, uh, I mean, it's the cheapest possible market. It actually, and I must say, it's an extraordinary uh, recycling urban machine. So this is where many things get recycled. Things that we don't use anymore, somebody doesn't use, somebody doesn't need anymore, get someone who is happy to have it. So as, as a, I would say as a, as a recycling mechanism or equipment in the city, it's a very interesting one. It's got a very, it's been like that, actually, it's very similar for many years, that's the early century's image of this very much, this very place. This is how you see it, it's a chaotic, multicolored space where all kinds of things happen. It's a very, and can be as, you know, as cheap, and run down as that. Uh, actually, the whole space had not had any investment by the city for a long, long time. You see, this is a project we were involved with. We, we did that with Genoa. And this is the, the flyover, with, with, which has now disappeared. Uh, but this is the environment we're talking about. And this is the character. And this, this is one of the best shops in, in the market. Um, so that's the character we have. Uh, and as you see, it's, it's, it's low quality products, uh, second hand products. And the th problem we had is well, we have this client, we've got that area, which is roughly half the area we're given. This is what well, I want to talk about. And that's the concept. Without, well, we have, a, we have to build, we have to build something which should not be a building, which is an open air, informal, cheap market. We are going to, it's going to be in the front line of a very important prime public square. And we are given half the size of the street that we need because it's a market on the street. So what we thought is first of all, be careful not to destroy the essence, the nature of the, of, the, of the market. So it should be anything but a commercial center. It's not a, and it shouldn't be a building 
On the other hand, if you have the physical entity capable of dealing with the edge of the new square, because it's going to be forming the new square. And first of all, which to, my, to us was perhaps the most, the, the, thing, the thing was the, the less obvious problem is, well, what about the dignity of it? I mean, how, I mean, the, now that it's going to be moving or redone, everybody's sort of nostalgic of it. And sometimes people start realizing the importance of it. And on the other hand, we learn that these people had been giving back to the city more money than the rest of the, but any other market of Barcelona. So it was the cheapest, not invested on, but they were going to, they were giving back to the city more than anybody else. So that should be worth being noticed somehow. So we had, and what, what we proposed, what we proposed to have, this is a very schematic thing, we want the competition with, with the proposal is, let's build, a, let's build something that climbs on top of itself. So let's have the straight, wrapped onto itself, but keep it a straight. So it's, it's like, a, it's, like a, it's a straight itself, it's not a building. Should not, this, this market should not have a stories. Shouldn't be somewhere you have first story, two story, third story. No, it should be just a continuous straight, stripe of straight. Second, it should have some physical entity. So it should have, should have and we propose a canopy, a big canopy. So you could see from afar, you should recognize as a, as a differentiating object, as you would recognize a station or a market or a, any, big, any big public uh, institution. And then it should, it should be, and that's interesting, it should be attractive, which actually we had some trouble with because this was, we won the competition prior to the crisis and it was built during the crisis and it was almost finished when the crisis was at its worst situation and everybody was really angry. And, and we were trying to be, honestly and openly, we were trying to be iconic, which was a terrible word to, to say. You couldn't be iconic at the end. I, iconic was a big mistake uh, for everybody. Iconic was a sin. And the funny thing is we didn't want to be iconic just for the sake of it. We wanted to be iconic because we wanted to be recognized. We wanted to be fair with the, with the merchants and we wanted to be identifiable. And then we had, we had another mechanism, which was the ref, how to make this canopy somehow be perceived at the distance. Obviously it would be a very good mechanism to protect the users from the sun and the rain. But also we wanted it to be light, or how light, or how much, how could it disappear so far? And a way of making it at the same time disappear or lighter, and using it as to bring the city into the market and the market to the city in this kind of strong belonging situation was to reflect one into each other. So we thought if we had a reflecting ceiling, we could have the view of the city, so the feeling of being in the city, of being there, not just enclosed in a building, and the fact that somebody who would approach the market, even from afar, could feel in the market somehow. The activity will be perceived. So that's what we proposed. We proposed that. We won the competition, which ended up after a long lot of work into this. This is a final design. Uh, uh, and as you see, it ended up having actually quite a lot of space because the, the program we were given assumed that there was going to be a reduction of the size of the, of the market. Not too much, but quite a bit. And at the end, they didn't want the reduction because it was successful enough, the expectations were good, and they want, everybody wanted to keep to stay in the market. So we, are, have, we had to betray ourselves, and I'll show you in a minute. Because we promise ourselves, we say this should be anything but not a commercial center. Things like escalators had no place in here. But when we were asked to have this extra, this extra area, we had no option but to add an escalator. So we had to betray our, our promise, uh, which is there, I said. 
uh, how to edit Excel. That's, and that's how we work. We, uh, if anybody is interested, I'd be happy to explain. But what is nice is that we kept that area there, which is the, the, the lower area of the, of the market and the core of the market is where every morning, every market morning, there is a, an auction, which has been happening for centuries. And if some merchants come and just dump some merchandise, which typically is, could be anything. It could be somebody's life. It's some, just a, you know, a flat that is somebody died and it's empty and, and somebody buys it all and posts it, um, loads it into a lorry and dumps it here. And then with all those things that are sitting there on the ground, there's another group of merchants that bid for it, each of those lumps and say, how much for that? How much? And what is nice is they, it's a very interesting thing to see. If you're in Barcelona and, you're, and you wake up early, go there. Uh, it's interesting because you see this thing happening that has been there for centuries, how quickly people make bids and they arrange things and they make their business. And, they, and then when that's finished, the buyers just stay there and sell it on the spot. And they have to sell it, and if they, they cannot sell it, just they have to remove it like later. And that will be, so that's a traditional bit. That happens there. Then there's another type of shops that are those, which is just, just a, this is just a, a space in the ground, and, and a little cabinet. We designed the cabinets for them. And then there are these other, which are like little huts, little huts, like very little. So the merchant is actually in the hut, and you also from that. Uh, it's a combination of those. That's an interesting. We also obviously, obviously had to design a, a, a quite a big area of underground space, which you cannot you cannot see, but solves all the logistics on the problems in the neighborhood. Which one of the of the goals of the project was to reduce the pressure on the neighborhood, so that even in the central space of Barcelona. Coming in and out would be easy, and a storage area, and, and, and even a bit of parking. So, and that's uh, that's how it works. So that's what's underground, and this is the kind of it's only like a few images. Yes, very few of the five of the of the of the models we did. I don't know, eighty models of it, because the concept was clear and won us a competition, won us the project. But when we got to do it. Was, wasn't that easy. We were, it was really difficult to get a satisfactory solution. Uh, we're really desperate. We were working hard to find something that worked. The deadline for delivery was getting closer. I, was, uh, I couldn't sleep for a while. And we didn't find something. And then, and this to me, I always remember it's interesting because some of the information we had been given about the infrastructure, the, the big services running under the building, it was like a big tunnel for the, for the trains and, and a switch, was not exactly as they told us they were. They, they, they came up with the information that the, 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 the position of, of, of that infrastructure was slightly different. And actually, it was curving a bit more and encroaching our site more than expected. And in this sort of a curvy way, and that funnel, which was almost a drama, because how come we do this? Got to just can't deliver. Became the way to solve all of our anxieties about how to solve the canopy canopy shape. Because because of that, we started to organize that in in stripes, which we thought it would be interesting to relate this, those bays in this direction of that, somehow in proportion to the streets they were facing, and opening the span as you approach the big avenue. And at the same time, that series of columns that were you know, serving to span both grid lines could be curved, just pushed back because of this curve of the tunnel underground, in a way that in a very orderly manner, they would so break the lines. So the funny thing is, we find, we find a very simple order and a very simple way of breaking that order, so that you could once inside, you could not feel too much. You could even 
this column system will be very coherent somehow, at the same time difficult to identify. So it could be in some way that you fill the order, but we, you will not understand it as a, as, a, as a series of columns. So anyway, I could, leave, I could slip from then on, and everything worked happy. We ended up having this extraordinary structure, a very slender columns, really slender columns. The, our, our structural consultants from BOMA were really doing extraordinary work because we were demanding really the slenderest possible column still, which had to do, um, it was difficult to fabricate. And this big canopies uh, had to have a structure that had to be really reduced to a minimum amount of steel, capable of taking the wind. And uh, actually we were, this is very contemporary, no? we now know that you could systematize or you could actually you could fabricate things that in a very industrial manner without having to be identical. So you could you really now the, 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 the fabrication, the industrial processes nowadays, because of the digital revolution, has helped us to have the benefits of the industrialization, at the same time the diversity of completely different businesses. So for us it was interesting. Uh, that we could play with that and have a really, really somehow, I would, say, I would say playful, but free arrangement of those different base and angles and the, the face facets of, of the soffit on the ground. Uh, I'm not sure the guy where I was building was so happy that we could do so many things with, with it. <laughs> so the digital revolution, I think, was having given him a a hard time. Every time I saw this, uh, this guy had picking the right, the right uh, uh, plate, he had to put it there, because there were thousands of them. Well, it ended up being some that kind of... Uh... The other interesting thing for us was, because, and I keep, I must I keep vindicating this, and that's got to do with our way of approaching is the technical parts are part of, of our work, because um, I'm, I'm very much for the, the craft the craft of architecture, as opposed to the, you know, the, the more arty, you know, elevated approach. And I think, the, I think one of the interesting things that we do as architects is make things real. I suppose so we have this, we have to face real needs, and we have to to put whatever we think is the best solution is in place. And at, and I think in Spain we have the burden, and also the the the, the, the uh, privilege of being responsible technically for that. So we, we have this thing where engineers also, as far as the society is concerned, uh, not that we have design destruction or anything here, because I mean we're supposedly trained for that, but it's, it's too complicated. But all the construction issue is very much something we feel very interested in. So that's so this soffit we 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 did actually we were involved in a project with with Janovel in, in Madrid. We had some experience in doing. This, we, we wanted this reflection to be very, very, uh, very clear in some sense. On the other hand, we wanted it to be tainted with, with the color, not to be too literal. So, and, and we wanted it to be low maintenance and, and durable. So we, we, we came to the conclusion that stainless steel, gold, golden stainless steel would be the perfect solution. It will, it will taint the reflection, so it will not be literal. It will make an allusion to the kind of merchandise you get there. So this is of this, 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 this looking what it is not kind of thing. It will be a very good reflection. And on the other hand, but the difficult thing is that I will be really had a very, very low maintenance and, and resilient uh, behavior. But the thing is the performance of it was guaranteed, but then it didn't play well with the lightness we wanted, so it had to be laminated with a honeycomb aluminum panel, and that didn't work quite together, so it had to laminate it with a, with a, with a, um, a special glue. That was, a, that was a three M. Was, if anybody's interested in details, I'll be happy. It was quite a challenge. It had to be hung from, up, from above, and it's not easy to do that without warping it. Then we had these this irregularities, which, to be honest, we loved. Once you have it, it's even nicer to have it slightly wavy. 
Uh, and then, of course, all this had to be guaranteed that it will not fall, because that was the whole thing. It's, I was going to have a tremendous strength for the wind, and uh, so all the testing, uh, how it will stay, well, was, I must say, it was really interesting. I must say, the team was really annoyed by the time, because the project was, took too long to, 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 to build because of the crisis, and then somebody saw in a, in a, in a magazine the project that Norman Foster office, Foster's office had done in Marseille, which also a soffit, which was with, with, with the golden mirror, and everyone was furious about it. How come we were here before? We did it. Our project is much earlier than that. Is. But obviously, obviously, walking. I mean, we're all, all exposed to the same kind of thing, so it's not. It's not. It's not nothing. Uh, I, I'm. I might say I'm, I'm not particularly concerned about trends. I mean, this is something that sometimes you're obsessed not to be to be go beyond that, and that your 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 whatever you think of is so original. So I don't think I, I, I don't feel any 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 burden with with or any problem with trends or uh, or originality as such. What I'm concerned is that they're adequate, and obviously. Not only vocabulary, but materials and, and research and, 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 and information that is running all over is influences, influencing us all constantly. So, to me, it felt like pretty, pretty reasonable that that could have happened. But anyway, we, because the works were delayed for a couple of years, we, we didn't have that image that we were expecting. At that. But uh, we had also the racing. It was, the project was built on the ground and then raised, hoisted all the way up. It was very spectacular. There was no need to do that at all. Just the builder had promised it, and uh, the city forced him to do that, although he was asking not to do it. And we and we would agree with him, please don't ask him to do that because it's going to be even more difficult and we don't need him to do it. But uh, the city was completely adamant. You promise it, you're going to do it. Uh, he was hoisted. I don't have a video. I, I'm sorry there's not a video here because I thought it was... It's quite impressive to see it climb all the way up there. Uh, that was a really interesting moment. You know, all those things climbing very slowly. Uh, at the same time, it's really actually extraordinary because each one of those... Of those... Uh, I don't know the English for that, but... Uh, Pistons, they have to be extremely well balanced because the pressure you have to do that is completely different to that there. Because it depends on the, on the weight and the, and, and, and the moment. And, the, and they all have to do it simultaneously because if they do it, it's, it's, it's quite uh, amazing how they, how they do it. It was really an interesting moment. Um, we started to, to anticipate what it would look like and the changes it would look at at night and day. And um, those are the section of, I like that image. Um, this is a wavy, it's like a sea of zinc on top of it. This is the huts. We gave a lot of thought to the huts because, and it's, it's interesting, we designed it very carefully and it was an interesting debate with the, with the, Merchants, because they ask us to have it once again, and this time I think we did a better job. They said, "Have them colorful again." Why don't have them colorful? Say, and they say, "You don't need any color. The color you are colorful. Hats doesn't. Need. They have to be neutral." And we were really convinced that they had to be well designed, but not designed. So it shouldn't be very too clever. It shouldn't be too designed. It should be as neutral as possible. So they were gray, very light. We thought it was important that they were light although they were probably going to be there for a long time, but they, were, they should look like they could be moved over, that they were just something, this kind of provisionality uh, on top of the street, sitting on that street would be, would be I think that worked pretty well. That's the marketing progress. And that's how, how this, these are the, these are the, those are just um, uh, the, Cabinets, uh, little cabinets. Are there. Those, those, the other ones are huts. That's in the middle of the construction. We, we took advantage of the, of the slopes of the, of the streets surrounding it, so to create that kind of... Um, to 
to emulate the same idea of this of this lower level um, square where the where the auction happens. So all that worked quite well, and you see it's the very slender columns, and uh, and that's how it uh, looked like at the end. That's the escalator. It works all right, I think. Wasn't that bad. And that's the dramatic entrance, and that's what we thought would be justified. That's that's the market unit. That's a pretty busy. I like this relationship with the city. One of the good things about this big canopy is that it attracts you from, from afar, which is actually it's a very commercial approach, and we were very absolutely conscious of that. I was, and um, protects you, gives you shelter, mainly from the sun, and you can tell that something special and attractive, attractive is going on there. But at the same time, when you approach it, you can, the city is there, so even from within, really this, this idea of the, of, the, of the city that you climb up top. When we were designing this, one of the most critical bits of the whole process was explaining to the merchants that we're going to have the whole market on a slope. And they were saying, you mean a slope? It's going to be like that? I said, yes, it's going to be like that. I said, but that, why? Why is it going to be like that? It's, it's going to, and everybody was starting to be nervous. I was nervous as well because it was going to be a challenge if they didn't like it. But I was, I, I was with my family traveling all around Europe that summer, and uh, and we were checking on every. It was just by chance that we really were in many places, and we're checking on every place we visited. What was the slope or the most successful commercial place in the town? And you know what? Almost all su successful, at least most of the most important ones, are, are the ones we checked, are on a slope. They have, they have so, and you can see Burlington Arcade, the flea market of Paris, Aquestel Moyano, or, or Rastro de Madrid, almost all have, and I'm pretty sure there's a good reason for that. I think, I think, helps, I think helps to adequate your pace, and your attention, because uh, it's, really, it's really extraordinary. So I felt very confident. We checked the slope, what it was. But so we have a, the, our project had a varying slope. We promised, we, we made an agreement. We would not go any, we would not go beyond, I think it was four and a half percent in central areas. And so we have a range, and, and, we, and we really maintain within that range, and it, and it worked very well. Uh, we convince them, we convince ourselves first, we convince them, and it's working very well. Actually, you, once you walk into it, you really just keep on walking, and you just, and you don't even realize you are climbing, depends from what you're doing, but you really climb. I just feel like walking on the street, and that's, uh, and it's very, it's very much what we intended, it's working very well. Once again, one of the things that we did, by the way, we were, this, this, this an if, you see, that, like the, like the, the, the theater, which is, which is one of those postmodern Bofils uh, uh, projects, which is a temple like, like a classic temple, which has got this, this straight eve there. And we played a bit that game. We were in front, so we've got a continuous eve in front of the other eve. And then from there, everything starts to, 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 to move up, upwards and gets a much freer canopy at the other end. So we try to be civilized as, as we did in another you know, project. We try, try to, this, 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 this thing of, uh, typically in a, in a school, in an architectural school, you would, you would talk about a dialogue with them, this dialogue with them. Well, that's a very typical way of naming it, but it, I think it entails the responsibility of, of uh, paying attention to the fabric of, of uh, uh, or the form of your neighbors. Um, this is the only bit of color we gave them, <laughs> just so it could be identified somehow, but it didn't even need it. It's, uh, that's how it, those streets look like. Very... We, this, we suggested that they should use the gables of the end of the rows of, the, of those, those, those um, uh, terraces of series of huts with, with some artwork. 
and and they should they should change every so often. I say there's a nice place, and and we even uh, uh, invited a, a nice photographer, very good photographer, Rafael Vargas, to do the first art on the gables of the of the market. For us, we'll show you in a minute. This is the tip of the, the high, the, the uppermost end of the market, where there's some, there's a bit of food. It's the only place we have a bit of, it's like, a, it's like the, the, the food court of the market. It's, it's a really small version of that. I must say it works. So, so for some reason, the, you know, all the, all this, the, the shopping centers, they always have this attractor at the top, but it, we, we use that. It's up there. Well, that's, the, uh, all the market is, can be fenced off. It operates only four days a week. The rest is, is closed and they close it. We try to guarantee that the market is completely open from everywhere. So it has no door, no entrance. Everything is on the street. You just, if you're on the street around it, you just, just get in into it. Uh, all right, sorry, perhaps too many. These two streets as well have this this one you see the more, more solid side of it because it's a more built area. From within, you have the feeling. That's the other. All right, and that is, that is the project. Finally, finally, we know what's going to happen there. That's the competition winner for the square. It's going to be more of a park than a, than a square. It's a nice, I think it's an interesting project. When we, when we were designing and building the Akbar Tower with Jan Nouvel, uh, nobody knew what the Square was going to look like. Many years later, we designed this. Nobody knew what was going to be there. And by the time we were almost finishing the project, this is this this uh, this this uh, competition was held and was going. It's, for us, it was somehow satisfactory that the designers of the of the winning proposal did worry themselves of what the, the square would look like from the market. So that was, so when they did this image, they say, well, that's, that's nice. As you see that they really uh, care about what's going to look like uh, this big canopy of rain. Just briefly, uh, it's, it's been very interesting for us and it's got to do with the time we've had and I think we should revisit this sometime. I think it has to do with the responsibility of these big investments on in the city. And we went through this terrible crisis. And you can tell by the press response to this really important, very important bit of, of public equipment in the city that uh, it was really, at the beginning, there was really a lot of interest and even excitement about what was going to happen. Uh, the follow up enthusiasm of the, of the, of the, of the heroic uh, construction of it. Uh, then the drama of the day, I think it was like one week before the opening, it was this a tremendous rain in Barcelona, incredible rain. And they, the, the connections of the had not been made properly. And we, and I, I still regret it, but the client mainly, allow the merchants to put some of the merchandise in the in their storage area. And the whole thing was rain and there was a big flood, it was complete. And we were all over the press. I guess I mean I, I can tell you who the politicians blame for it. Not themselves. But then this this country in this in the middle of a terrible crisis then when they is it really worth 50 million euros you know, in this? It was a big, big, big decision. And then the whole thing is they open, the activity increased, was a big success. This, the, the, this is, you know, the, the market was you know, uh, uh, skyrocketing, so fantastic. It was a touristic success. It was a success story. And, and uh, it was a tremendous lesson as to how relevant, and that's what our role is. And I, I, I'm not saying we pay too much of a role in this, but for us, I was asked a lot at the time, a lot. Is it really worth doing it? Is it really this kind of cheap market? Are we doing the right investment? 
And I, I was somehow reassured that I could say yes. I honestly believe it is a good investment. It's not only good for, it's not only fair on the merchants, it's good for the city, it's good for us all, and it's got a very positive social impact. Um, this is debatable, but the thing, the way to find for me was extremely interesting. The, the, the difference in between what was the politicians' attitude towards it at every stage, depending on what the public, the public opinion was, and what was our own, the construction of our own opinion of what should be done. So it's funny because politicians had to make the strong decisions that what had to be done and engage us. And we that were given the decision made probably were at some point much better equipped to have an honest opinion on whether it had been a good idea or a bad idea. And to me, it's an extraordinary thing to do and gives me something which is even some hope. And I tell you, as, as future colleagues, uh, part of our role is just not just solving problems, but helping to pose the right questions to society and help them build those opinions. And I would say without the arrogance of the guy who's capable of imagining something they cannot imagine and then, and that skill should not blind us into, into arrogance. But yes, take the responsibility of understanding sometimes part of this complexity and give back uh, that opinion. That my, my feeling is that we could seriously help. And uh, uh, that to me was a very, probably the best thing out of this crisis, which was, I must say, was terrible because we were under fire for long, for quite a few long, some time. This just to me is something also very satisfactory about this, is how you can tell from these photographs by, by, by uh, Rafael Vargas of the previous market, how it used to be, uh, that ended up being used at the gables. And you see this trompeils of the old image and the, and the, and the reality, the new reality. Uh, and the reality of during the works, how the park will may look like from. So the other, the other side. So that's, um, that's uh, the big image of this market where this auction that is being almost for a thousand years happening and is still happening there, and very much in the same spirit. And if something we've achieved, I think, is to protect that, not destroying that, to me, is even much more interesting than any other urban uh, achievement. Um, so I think that's it. I think that's yes, it is. So thank you for listening to this.